Although the first time that, that we did this, six of the young men in the class had already been playing for weeks. And after PJ spent an hour showing everyone how to get logged on and begin playing, he spent another hour with those players. And they were using a language that I knew the words, but I didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> Definitely uh, has its own language. He can defend a hockey goal. He can write a novel. He can produce a movie, direct a television commercial shoot, and here's the hard one, even entertain a full gymnasium of elementary, middle, or high school students and keep them in the palm of his hand. PJ can and also has created a very high-tech website and video game that's catch capturing the imagination of today's Teenager. Sarah, do we have any? Oh, we're all out. Oh, shoot. Well, if you'll, if you'll just Google PJ Harzman New York Times, it'll, it'll come right up. He was featured by Matoko Rich, who spent months researching this and has had an ongoing series in the New York Times because of his forward thinking combination of a science fiction storyline and a video game, which allows readers to enter in movies television programs, Comic-Cons. How many of us have been to a Comic-Con? It's a lot, a lot. Well, if you haven't been, you've got to go to one of these things. You've got to go and get a good costume. <laughs> Preferably Star Wars. In fact, Chewbacca was at the one in, in, uh, in, in Phoenix. I was, I was just, yeah, the real Chewbacca was there. These Comic-Cons, they're wildly popular. The Firefly television series and Serenity the movie are voices for the characters in the latest version of Halo. Halo 3, um, after all those hours of playing on Sundays at PJ's house. And so as PJ will explain, it seemed logical to him to design a game to go with the book. And I want to suggest to you that that's a good development. A development that has all the I came, to, uh, I came to writing, I didn't come to writing through the traditional channels. I was not somebody that grew up in literature. In fact, I didn't like anything that was given to me in school. I was one of those kids. I could not, and still not, understand the relevance of the green light across the bay in the Great Gatsby. It was just a frickin' green light. <laughs> so when you come with this to English teacher, they're not really, they don't really like that too much. So I didn't read what they gave me, and uh, I was one of those kids that just, a book on the bottom shelf, on the, the gates of the water, under the wall, brown paneling. There's no cover in the book. I pull, I pull the book out, and I start reading it. And I sit up. And wow. I'm just going through the whole book. Like, Why can't I post like this at school? And it was Carrie by Stephen King. <laughs> so, and I'm 10. I think I'm, I'm 10 right now. So I went on this very long journey in the toy, toy box. And I'd put them all in the toy box, put the lid down, then take everything I could from the room and put that on top of the toy box. I'd push my bed up against the wall, make sure the hall light was on, so I couldn't see anything coming up the stairs. And that's what I read, and that's that was what my reading was. When I so it wasn't. I'm 38 now, and I'm you know working and advertising that, and just not really liking what I was doing. And I started started writing, and when I finished, and you know Sarah loved the book and, and wanted to buy the book, and I'm done. And, I'm sitting in the backyard with my buddy and I have looked at all these websites, really big authors too, you know, people that I admire. And I'm sitting there. Now, I'm, I've worked for Nike, NFL, uh, Hewlett Packard, AT&T, everybody. You create content for these guys. If you do not turn something around that's measurable instantly, you're fired. Now, I'm looking at these websites and my first response is, why in God's name would anybody ever come back here twice? <laughs> There's just nothing there. And I came to the conclusion that these sites are really just a waste of money. God incarnate for them walking on their hallways of their schools. Because I'm now talking to them at something at their level. I'm connecting. I am no longer telling them they need to read the book. I'm up here giving them a secret and telling them how this book's going to help them succeed, whether it be in this game or just be uh, uh, you know, cool in life. And that has given me, given me such a connection to these kids. And I play the game all the time. I'm online all the time. So they get direct access to an author. The power of the game, I mean, 74% of the kids that play play more than 15 minutes a day. Over 33% spend more than an hour. And I get emails from teachers and from parents that go, I hate when my kids play video games, but when, at least when they play yours, they got a book in their hand. 
And what happens is, is online there's questions you have to answer from the game in order to get ahead in the book. And you know, a new kid will come on and he hasn't read the book, and he'll ask, you know, well, what's this character doing this thing? And then you watch all the other kids claim them on the message boards going, <laughs> things like in the thing, uh, in, the, in, the, in the response to games like Call of Duty or uh, Grand Theft Auto. Games have nothing to do with reading. You know, I don't create a game where you go pick up a gun and <coughs> kill another person. I, th I create a game that is in a virtual world, and I just expand the world that I created in my book online. And that made me think that, you know, two things. What's video games, a lot of people are ignorant as to what is actually out there in that broad term video game. They're basing this away. So, uh, you know, that's what we came up with that SLE term, just so that we can come up with some fancy term where people will think that, ooh, it's an SLE. Well, I've got to have an SLE. But it's, you know, it's not a video game. So, uh, let me show you a couple of the, of the game screens and the way that it works. So, when you first log on the, uh, and, and you sign up an account, you basically have to decide who you want to be. So you go and you choose which central character from the book. It gives them bonus material. <coughs> gives them this special code that they can then use, take back into the game, and that gives them uh, rare items that they use to trade with other players. And I mean, I can go on and on and on for hours about this on, on the gameplay. That's how deep that it is. The newest thing coming up now are spaceships. You know, from book two, you're going to be able to build your own spaceships and expand those up. So uh, it's been a blast. It really has been a blast. Is that everything? Correct me to softwire.com, but the game site is ringsoforbis.com, and I have bookmarks here that have that on there if you guys want to bookmark at the end. And I'll also be signing at the Candlewick booth 507 for book three at 12.30, and I'll give you more of that stuff. And I have some Orbis necklaces and that that I'll give out to, and all those sites are on those bookmarks. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Demographics of players current now. What's the high end age or the low end age? I've got. Um, I'm just saying now. You have I got it. From, I got it from eight to eighty. Honestly. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah, but you know, it does. Sixty-seven percent of the players do fall in that eighteen to thirty-five male demo. Eighteen thirty-five. Yeah, you know, but I do have uh, the kids. The the you, know, you these games are built three hours, three days, three months. That's how they you know in the in you know if you're a real gamer, you go into these things. If you you try to get them past three hours and three months. Then you know, that, that's the, if you get past three months and they go, you are successful. The game's been up two years now through the labs because the game is a real-time life systems management. You have to trade, you have to uh, establish relationships with other players, you have to open your own store, set prices, watch for inflation, keep track of markets. I mean, it can get really in depth if you really want to take it to that level, uh, you know, or you can just wait till a knee walker, you know, attacks you and, and, and play that way. You know, there's everybody plays on both gamuts. And because I've done this game, and because I did the Card Soldier Wars, I'm realizing in a certain I'm going to have to follow that up here.